It's time now for Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Anison and Kalinos present Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. One of the most famous characters of American fiction and one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight and every Thursday at the same time, the famous old investigator takes from his file and brings to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. Tonight's case is entitled, The Case of the Ruthless Murderers. People appreciate Anison most when they want quick relief from sudden pain of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia. At times like that, you don't want to wait. You want fast relief. So get Anison and keep it handy. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, it contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Many people have been first given Anison tablets by their own physician or dentist. So for your own sake, let me urge you to try Anison. For most effective relief, use only as directed. You can get Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N, at any drug counter. Now for Mr. Keene and the case of the ruthless murderers. Our scene opens in the office which Mr. Keene, the famous investigator, shares with his friend and partner, Mike Clancy. At the moment, Mr. Keene is in his private office, while Mike is at the outer office file case unaware that trouble is about to make a sudden and unexpected appearance. Hmm, let's see now. Where did this go in file C? Yes, mister. Can I... Stay where you are. Don't make a move or I shoot. You're still pretty fast on the draw, Clancy. Fast enough to be one step ahead of you, Rod Marble. Turn around. I'm not carrying a gun. You think I want to spend another five years stretching the pen? What's the trouble, Mike? Take a look at who just come into the office, boss. Rod Marvel, isn't it? That's right, Mr. Keene. I'm the man you helped send to jail for bank robbery five years ago. I got out this morning. Boss, do you remember the last thing this fellow said at the trial when the judge asked him if he had anything to say? Yes, Mike. I remember very well. I said I'd kill you in cold blood, Mr. Keene, when I got out. You can tell your partner here to put his gun away. I didn't come here to your office to start anything. Well, he's not carrying a gun, Mr. Keene. But I wouldn't trust him anyway. It's all right, Mike. Let's hear what Rod Marble has to say. Mr. Keene, I'm sorry I made that threat against your life. Huh. Apologizing, is he? Now I'm sure he's got something up his sleeve. Five years in prison gives a man plenty of time to think and change his mind. I forgot my ideas about getting revenge and hitting back at you long ago. All right, Marble. If you didn't come here to get revenge, why did you come? I wanted to ask you one question, Mr. Keene. What question? Someone gave you the evidence that helped send me up. Someone squealed, one of my old gang. Who was it? I'm sorry. That's something I can't tell you. Look, Mr. Keene, give me his name and you'll never hear from me again. What's more, I'll give you every dollar I own if you'll tell me. Do you want to go back to prison, Marvel? This time it might be the electric chair. I don't care. I could just get my hands on the rat who squealed on me and sent me to the You pen. won't get that information from me, Marvel. Okay. But I'm going to find out who he is if it's the last thing I do. Well, there's a man who's looking for trouble, Mr. Keene. And if I ever saw a fellow who was out for blood, he's it. If it's trouble he wants, Mike, I'm afraid he'll get it. And it may be more than Rod Marvel bargained for. <laughs> Car's parked on the corner, Mr. Keene. Uh, this way, sir. This is a special edition of the afternoon papers, Mike. Yeah, I wonder what the extra is. I get a copy from that newsboy, boss. Extra business, my word. Extra paper, mister. Yeah, here you are, boy. We are the body. Extra business, my word. Look at the headline, Mr. Keene. Prominent businessman found murdered. His name is Neil Justin. Neil Justin? Let me see that paper, Mike. Sure, and he's some kind of a big manufacturer, isn't he, Mr. Keene? Yes. 
was found with three bullets in his body in a phone booth downtown. There were no witnesses to the crime, the paper says. And it took place at about four this afternoon. That was just an hour ago. Rod Marble was in our office at three. He could have had time to leave, track down Justin and murder him. But, Mr. Keene, what would Marble have to do with a, a man like Neil Justin? Mike, Mr. Justin was the man who gave me the information five years ago that helped send Marble to jail. Saints preserve us. Then Marble must have murdered him. He must have come to our office to establish an alibi by saying that he was with us at the time of the murder. It's entirely possible. Mike, perhaps you'd better drop me off at police headquarters. I think I'll have a talk with Lieutenant Hale. Okay, Mr. King. Well, looks as if someone made a mistake. A mistake, Mike? Yeah, there's a woman sitting in our car, boss. So I notice. Excuse me, ma'am. Don't you have the wrong car? Are you Mr. Keene, sir? No, I'm Mike Clancy, his partner. Mr. Keene's right here. Oh, one of the elevator boys in your office building pointed your car out to me, Mr. Keene. My name is Rena Soffer. I, I just had to see you. Why didn't you come up to my office? I didn't have an appointment, and I thought someone in your office might not let me see you. Mr. Keene, you've got to help me. They've arrested my husband, Tom, and he's innocent. Arrested him for what, Mrs. Soffer? The murder of Neil Justin. I, I know how you've helped people, sir. Everybody's heard how kind you are and how fair. And Tom's innocent. He didn't kill Neil Justin. If your husband is innocent, I'm sure the police will give him every chance to prove it, Mrs. Soffer. But you don't understand. Tom has a record, a criminal record. Now I remember his name, Mr. Keene. Tom Soffer's been under suspicion at police headquarters. They think he's a gang killer. No, that's not true, Mr. Clancy. My, my husband's weak, I know. I... I've tried to keep him away from his bad companions, but he's not a murderer. He'll get a chance to prove that, Mrs. Soffer. Mr. Keene, please, just, just go down to the jail and talk to Tom. That, that's all I ask. And if he doesn't convince you that he's innocent, I, I won't bother you again. Very well, Mrs. Soffer. Uh, there's a phone booth in that cigar store, Mike. We'll call Lieutenant Hale and ask if we can see Tom Soffer. Oh, thank you, Mr. Keene. I'll... I'll never forget your kindness as long as I live. I'll go back now and tell Tom you're coming. All right. But I warn you, if your husband is guilty, I may have to help convict him. I'll take that chance. Goodbye, Mr. Keene. Goodbye. Let's make that phone call to police headquarters, Mike. Right, boss. Well, here's an empty phone booth, Mr. Keene. I I'll make the call, sir. You know, Mike, this case isn't as obvious as it appears. It may prove a lot more difficult to solve than we imagine. Hello? Police headquarters? Lieutenant Hale, homicide squad, please. Lieutenant, Mike Clancy. I, I'm calling for Mr. Keene. We hear you've just picked up a man named Tom Soffer for the Justin murder. Huh? What's that, Lieutenant? Uh, just a second. Mr. Keene. Yes, Mike. Tom Soffer broke away from his arresting officer. He's loose. Well, let me talk to Lieutenant Mike. Lieutenant Hale, it's Mr. Keene. I suppose you've sent out a general alarm for Tom Soffer. Well, I suggest you send out another alarm for Rod Marble. That's right. Marble was just released from the state penitentiary. Yes, I'll explain when I reach your office in 15 minutes. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Sure, now it's beginning to look as if this fellow Soffer may be just as guilty as Marble, Mr. Keene. Well, they both didn't kill Neil Justin, Mike. And there's always a chance that someone new may enter this case. In any event, I'm going to the lieutenant's office and then home. Get in touch with me there if you learn anything new of importance. <laughs> Are you Mr. Keene, sir? Yes. I've been waiting for you here in front of your apartment for the past two hours. I'm Arthur Justin, Neil Justin's son. Oh, uh, come in, Arthur. Please sit down. Thank you. Mr. Keene, you've read about my father's murder. I've come here to ask you to help solve the case. I'll be glad to help you, Arthur. I happen to be working on the case already. You are? 
Yes, a criminal named Rod Marvel is involved in it. Have you ever heard his name mentioned? No, sir. But if you think he murdered Dad, you're wrong. What makes you so sure, Arthur? Because I think I know who the killer is. Although I need some evidence. That's why I want your help, sir. Who is the suspect you have in mind? A man named Luke Homer. My father was very worried for weeks before his death. He said someone was shadowing him. Dad was in fear of his life. Mm -hmm. What did this man Homer have against your father? Well, I, I don't know, Mr. Keene. And I never knew why Dad didn't go to the police either. But I did something about it. What did you do? I trailed Homer. I spotted him outside the house a few days before Dad's murder. And I followed him from then on. I found out his name and occupation. He's a mechanic. I can point him out to you, Mr. Keene, and you can do the rest. Where is he? He gets home from work about nine every night, and this is his address. If you meet me on this corner at five of nine this evening, sir, you'll be able to put a pair of handcuffs on my father's murderer. Well, we can certainly question this man, Luke Homer. Very well, Arthur, I'll meet you. Uh, perhaps I ought to come alone, however, without my partner or the police. If Homer sees his house is being watched, he may not show up. All right, Mr. Keene. Then I'll see you on the at street corner tonight at nine. And we'll proceed from there. Arthur, is that you? It's Mr. Keene, over here. Is that you up? Mr. Keene! Mr. Keene, where are you? Over here, Arthur. I heard two shots. Are you hurt, sir? Let me help you. In just a moment, we'll return to Mr. Keene and the case of the ruthless murderers. Meanwhile... Beware of unpleasing breath that breathes between the teeth. Use Kalanos toothpaste with dental floss action. Those cracks and crevices where food particles can decay must be reached to have a really clean mouth, a welcome breath. Your dentist knows this to be true. Use Kalanos toothpaste with dental floss action. Kalanos gives amazing dental floss action. That is, sends thousands of active cleansing bubbles to penetrate hard-to-reach dental areas helps dislodge bits of food that can cause unpleasing breath and tooth decay. Use Kalanos toothpaste with dental floss action. Kalanos has high polishing action too. Brightens dingy teeth by removing ordinary yellow surface stains. Kalanos is gentle, safe even for children's teeth and tender gums. Enjoy its cool, clean, minty flavor. Kalanos is dentist recommended. Cleans your teeth bright, keeps your breath right. Use Kalanos toothpaste with dental floss action. Get Kalanos with Dental Floss Action today. Now back to Mr. Keene and the case of the ruthless murderers. Mr. Keene, the great investigator, and his partner, Mike Clancy, have been investigating the murder of Neil Justin, a well-known businessman. Although Mr. Keene already has two suspects, Rod Marble and Tom Soffer, both men with criminal records, Neil Justin's son, Arthur, has come to Mr. Keene accusing still a third a man named Luke Homer. Arthur Justin has told Mr. Keene where Homer lives and made an appointment with a famous investigator to meet nearby at nine in the evening. Now, as Mr. Keene keeps his appointment and waits for Arthur Justin, he's suddenly ambushed. Mr. Keene! Mr. Keene, where are you? Over here, Arthur. I heard two shots. Are you hurt, sir? Well, let me help you. It was only a miracle that saved me. Some instinct made me drop to the pavement just before he fired. Oh, did you see who he was? No, no, I'm afraid I could never identify him. Oh, please forgive me. It was my fault. If I hadn't been a few minutes late for our appointment, I would... It doesn't I... matter, Arthur. It's quite possible if you had been here, you'd have been killed yourself. Mr. Keene, the man who tried to kill you was the murderer of my father. It was Luke Homer. It must have been. Well, there's no point waiting around here any longer. You'll never come back. I'm going to return to my office, Arthur. At this hour of night, Mr. Keene? I have a complete file of every known criminal in the country. And perhaps I'll find Luke Homer's name in it. We've sent out a general alarm for two other suspects involved in your father's murder. 
Rod Marble and Tom Soffer. Now we'll add this man, Luke Homer, to the list. Well, there's nothing in the file here about a man named Luke Homer, Mr. Keene. Mm. Just about gone through the list. What time is it, Mike? It's almost midnight, sir. You know, I just had an idea. Seems to me... It's Rod Marble, boss. Don't move, Mike. He's armed. I've got six bullets in this gun, Keene, for you and your partner. I know he was lying, boss. That story about having to change a heart was full. I wasn't lying. I meant every word I said. Keene's the one who changed my mind. And how did I do that, Marble? By telling the police to send out an alarm for me for Justin's murder. You're trying to frame me, Keene, and I'm going to put you away just as I promised I would five years ago. Watch out, boss. Are you... And he's out cold, sir. And I'll relieve him of that gun. That's nice work, Mike. You hadn't timed that blow so well. We'd both have a few bullets in our heads. Well, I'll bring him around and then lug him down to police headquarters. The boys will be glad to see this bucko, Mr. Keene. Undoubtedly. But I'm not so sure he's the man they want for Neil Justin's murder. After all this, and after what you told me about being ambushed... That's just it. Mike, I think I have an important clue to follow up. A clue that may prove to be an amazing revelation. Take Rod Marble to headquarters, then get a good night's sleep. We'll both need all our energy when we return to this affair tomorrow morning. Yes, you can reach me here in my office, Lieutenant Hale. I'm still working with Neil Justin's son, Arthur, on the Luke Homer angle. But so far, Homer seems to have completely disappeared. However, I have an idea of my own that I've been working on for the past two days. Yes, of course, Lieutenant. I'll keep in touch with you. Goodbye. Mr. King. Oh, hello, Arthur. Uh, has there been anything new, sir? Any, any clues to my father's murder? No, nothing yet. Oh, I, I want you to meet my wife, Alicia, sir. Oh. How do you do, Mrs. Justin? I'm very glad to know you. I've heard so much about Mr. Keene, the famous investigator. And I'd like to help you in any way I can, sir. Arthur's father meant almost as much to me as he did to my husband. I think I understand, Mrs. Justin. Alicia's worried, Mr. Keene. She thinks they'll try to get at me in some way. Oh, oh no, that's not where... What were you about to say, Mrs. Justin? Oh, Mr. Keene, I want to speak to you alone. Alicia, what's the trouble? Are you hiding something from me? Oh, Arthur, I beg you to trust me and do as I say. I can't keep this to myself any longer. I want to see Mr. Keene in private. You know, I've always trusted you, Alicia. I'll do as you ask. I'll be waiting in the car downstairs. Well, Mrs. Justin, what is it you want to tell me? Mr. Keene, I just couldn't bring myself to say this in front of Arthur. It'd tear down all his ideals. But I believe I know who murdered his father. Do you? Neil Justin was involved with a woman named Sarah Blows. He'd known her ever since his wife died, and before as well. I see. I believe he tried to break off with Sarah, and she took revenge. She's a violent type, Mr. Keene, I know, because I've met her. Do you know where the Sarah Blows can be located? Yes. What do you intend to do, Mr. Keene? See her, of course, immediately. If what you say is true... I'll break this case wide open, Mrs. Justin, inside of an hour. Yes? Are you Sarah Blows? That's right. My name is Keene. Mr. Keene, the famous investigator. I'd like to talk to you about a man named Neil Justin, who was murdered a few days ago. Neil, please uh, come in, Mr. Keene. Step into the living room and we can talk. A couple of friends of mine are anxious to join the conversation. What? Don't move, Keene, or we'll blow your head off. What is this? A trap? <laughs> so this is a guy who's supposed to be the biggest investigator of them all. Take a look at him, Pete. I'm looking, Tracy. You don't look smart enough to trail a giraffe. Stop being a comedian, Tracy. Get rid of him and get it over with. Okay, take it easy, sir. Pete, 
Yeah? We better tie him up in the garage. It's way in the back. If we stay here, somebody on the street might hear us. Get moving, Keen. Somebody might hear you. Do what? Put a bullet behind your rear, Keen. Well, the great Mr. Keene is tied up good and tight, Tracy. You want me to plug him now? Take it easy, Pete. I'm enjoying this. It ain't often we get a fish as big as Keene to fry. I suppose you two know what the penalty for murder is. The electric chair. Listen to him talk, Tracy. <laughs> You're the one who's getting the death sentence, Keene. Only we're doing the job with a gun. I warn you. You won't get away with this. He's talking too much to suit me, Tracy. Let's get started. Let him talk. His mouth ain't gonna be much good for talking in a couple of minutes. Pull that box out and put Keen in it. Mm -hmm. No, 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 wait. You know what this box is for, Keen? You. You and a load of quicklime. We're gonna freeze you in solid, then drop you in the river. No, no, please, have mercy. I'm an old man, but I, I don't want to die. Listen to him crawl. Yes, like they all crawl when their number's up. I'm not asking you to spare my life. But at least give me my choice. What's he talking about? What choice, Keen? I always feared this day. The day when I'd be cornered and helpless. Because of that fear, I carried a tiny bottle around with me, filled with deadly poison. So what? I've carried it to make it easy. When I knew there was no other way out to spare myself torture, at least let me take the poison. Holy smoke, he wants to make it easier for us. It'll make it easier for both of us. I'll have no pain. You can get away with this crime. I don't get it. All you have to do is leave my body here with the empty bottle of poison in my hand. The police will obviously think I was a suicide. It's a lot safer, Tracy, than having my body discovered full of bullet holes. Because the police would never rest until they'd caught you. What do you think, Tracy? I'm not sure, Pete. Yeah, what do we got to lose? If the old guy's nuts enough to want to do the job on himself, let him. Okay, we'll give Keen a break. Well, thank you. The poison is in a small bottle in my vest pocket. Look, I'm not taking them ropes off you, Keen. You can just open your mouth and we'll pour the stuff in. Anything you say. Just open the bottle and let me drink the poison. Here's a bottle, Tracy. Open it. Oh, it. Yes. Yes. The bottle is filled with it. I can't see. I'm blind, Tracy. The door. Where's the door? Come out with your hands up and no funny things. Mike! Mr. Keen, boss. Are you all right, sir? Here, I'll, I'll help carry you out. Just, just hang on. I got your message just in time, sir. Oh, that's good work, Mike. And there's a squad of plain clothesmen outside, sir. We got the others, too. Here's the door, boss. Easy now. I'm all right. Let me cut them ropes, Mr. Oh, thank King. you, Mike. That invention of mine, the condensed bottle of tear gas, saved my life. I had to put on quite an act to get them to open it. But when they did, the results were perfect. I'm sure, and that was one of the, the slickest inventions I've ever seen, boss. Tear gas condensed in a tiny bottle. Everything okay in there, Clancy? Everything's under control, Casey. Send in the other two. They're putting Sarah Blows and them two murderers into the patrol wagon, boss. But here are two more I know you're looking forward to seeing. I put the handcuffs on them 15 minutes ago and brought them here. Well, Arthur and Alicia, what have you got to say for yourselves? All I've got to say, Keen, is that if I didn't have these handcuffs on... Oh, I'd... take your medicine like a man, Arthur. Keen was too smart for you. I've had my eye on you a lot longer than you think, Arthur. Did you? There was no such man as Luke Homer. You made up the name just to lure me into an ambush. And the boss saw right through that Sarah Blows story, mister, and tipped off the police. Then he told me to nab you and keep you under arrest until he located the rest of your outfit. You and your wife were responsible for the murder of your father, Arthur. And it was a horrible crime. And maybe I can tell you why they killed him, Mr. Keene. <gasps> it's Rod Marble. Yes. The man who was a member of your room ring of criminals five years ago, before he was sent to prison. I didn't know it before, Mr. Keene, but you saved my life when you had me picked up on suspicion. Arthur Justin here was planning to put me out of the way along with you. You squealer! Keep your trap shut, Marble. Why shouldn't I squeal? Didn't your father squeal on me to save his own skin so I had to take a five-year rap? That's right, Marble. And at the time, Neil Justin's ruse worked. We believed he was a respectable businessman instead of a gang leader. I'm willing to talk to Mr. Keene. If I get a break... You'll get justice, Alicia. No more, no less. Keep quiet, Alicia, do you hear? I won't keep quiet. 
Mr. Keene, do you know why he killed his father? He wanted to take over the racket. His father wanted him out of it. But Arthur got big ideas. And who gave me those big ideas? You did, Elisa. What else have you two got to say? Mr. Keene, Arthur's father had warned him that Marble might talk and convict the gang. So Arthur decided the only way to, was to get rid of you and Marble after he shot his father. Well, that just about cleans things up, boss. I think I'd be taking these two lovebirds outside to the police. Mr. Keene, you certainly put one over on Tracy and Pete with that tear gas invention of yours. Tracy said he thought you were going to take poison and kill yourself. No man ever has the right to take his own life, Marvel. That's for God or the law. And as long as you're feeling so grateful to the boss, Marvel, maybe there's one request I think he'd like to make. Mr. Keene would appreciate it if you said nothing about that trick bottle of tear gas. Yes, Mike, it might help me in the future. When I get into a spot like that again, if the invention would remain a secret. Mr. Keene, you can depend on me to keep it under my hat. All right. Mike will accompany Arthur and Alicia Justin and the others to police headquarters, where we can write the finish to the murder of Neil Justin, a finish that will end in the death house for all concerned. <laughs> And so Mr. Keene finds a solution to the case of the ruthless murderer. The next time you're suffering from the pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, try Anison. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way have discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So next time such pain strike, take Anison. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30 and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. The name is Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. <laughs> Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons is based on the novel Mr. Keene. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Ann Hummer. Dialogue by Lawrence Clee. Bennett Kilpike plays Mr. Keene. It is on the air every Thursday at this time. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday when the kindly old tracer turns to the forgotten cave murder case. <laughs> <laughs>